on the other worlds, based in the frontier worlds of Halcyon's system, you are a passenger on a colony ship named the Hope. A malfunction fast and late that eventual journey took over 60 years, as opposed to the original 10. During the journey, your character was cried gently frozen, and a rogue scientist named Phineas Wells revives you and sets you out on a mission to either save the colony of Halcyon from corporate bureaucracy or not. Ah, there you are. Hail and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you After being revived by Wells, he shoves your character into an escape pod as the ship is chased and subsequently disabled by a pursuing force. As your escape pod crashes towards Tower 2, your first mission is to find a smuggler. And it doesn't take long as, oops, you crash right into him. You can already feel a sense of fun in the world as the smuggler's legs dangling now from the wreckage of your pod. After climbing over all the remains of his corpse and from a series of events, you find his ship, the unreliable and the onboard AI named Ada. She accepts you as her new captain. There's only one snag. It is missing power core. Ada advises that there may be one in the nearby town of Edgewater. Edgewater, in my opinion, is a despicable place. My first encounter with its citizens was with the grave dagger named Silas, who wanted me to accept money from people who were full vain with their payments for burial plots for the long dead relatives. Naturally, I accepted the quest. Knowing a sweet body of XP awaited me upon his commission. The Grease Monkey Argo? Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot... Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seconds. You see, Edgewater is owned and run by Spacer's Choice. Not only do all residents have to repeat the company slogans and sales pitches when talking to outsiders like me, but they are also owned by the company and have to pay for every service. It includes burial plots, which have to be paid for annually. And for all the conversation points are we solve all those situations. So because the world is so immersive and full, so full of unique details. Like walking through the streets and hearing NPCs complain about the salt tuna can we fool they had to eat all day, every day. Or the way in which it was expressed through a poor diet and lifestyle behind a town in the middle of plague and hypochondriacs who were obsessed with healthcare and medicine. Terminator Edgewater was eventful and I hope the rest of the game is as lovely crafted as Edgewater was. To say this is following space is an understatement. While the first and youngest in the world, you'll encounter many resemblances to the Fallout world. From computer terminals to conversation paths. But is that such a bad thing? I mean, for Fallout 76, the Fallout series was considered to be one of the best role-playing games of the modern age. There's even a reminiscence about the nice little republic in the way you select your companions. The game also features a traditional level up perk. The game also features a traditional level up system whereby when you attain a new level, you're rewarded with skill points and perks. This is the main great, but I think it is where the system feels a bit. For each level I've attained so far, I've been rewarded with about 10 skill points to do various stats. There are more than enough points to level up each section and create a well on the character. I've not seen any major improvement when I've cycled the perk. Combat is well balanced. Each weapon an option to modify it by adding elements to the site or magazine, for instance. Enemies around Edgewater and Demerville are well balanced, which fights the charge for being too overpowering. Marauders, robots, not all effective against different type of weapons. That's all for now. I'm impressed by the Outer Worlds and cannot wait to continue playing them. And if it is anything like all four games, then we can probably expect about 100 hours of gameplay.